Hi all, welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I talked about Swagger for REST API, the advantage of Swagger over Postman, real-time Swagger use case, and its benefit. Also, we discussed few important facts about Swagger. Now, in this video, we will configure Swagger in REST API using a Spring Boot. So let's begin. Let's quickly talk about the content of this video. We will see the Maven dependencies needed to add in our Spring Boot project. We'll do all the configuration changes from scratch. And then at the end, we will execute our Spring Boot project with Swagger. Before we jump into coding, let me tell you that we'll be configuring Swagger in the API, which I have created in my earlier video. You can do this on top of any of the basic REST API project which you have, any basic sample controller will also help you here. In case if you want to use the code base which I'm using here, please follow my GitHub link provided in the description below. So let me quickly show you, if you want to create a scratch project for your REST API, then go to that start.spring.io, select all these options as it is shown in this screen and click on generate. If you want more details about this, how you can generate your full-fledged REST API, please follow my channel and there I have described a complete details of your end-to-end -end project for your REST using Spring Boot. So once you generate your project, then I have already imported and this is, as I have told, this is the existing project where, where I have these components already created. Now in the pom.xml, this is the basic uh, dependencies which I have provided earlier. Now talking about the dependency which you need to add in the Swagger project, there are two things that you would need. The first thing is, the first thing that you would need is Swagger two dependencies, which is from a Google search, I found this Maven details. And the second thing that you would need is Swagger UI dependencies. So I'm just going to copy these two things in my project. I have added this, so it's Maven will install this jar into my project. I'll just do a quick Maven install. So now I have the Swagger related API jar available in the build path. Now if we go to my package and I will create another sample controller class for this just a hello world controller and in order to make this a rest controller i have to import this annotation and the next thing is request mapping i'll provide the basic mapping as hello i'll create a sample get method which will say hello and it will return hello swagger and this will be a get method for me at the mapping that i'm going to say is say so with this i've just created a basic controller i already have another controller which i'll show you when we will uh, actually see the swagger ui now the next thing that we are going to do is we have to create the swagger related configuration so there are certain steps that we have to follow and there are two ways that you can do it either you can provide your swagger related configuration into this spring boot application class itself or you can create your separate configuration swagger class separately what that means is if you do that then you can reuse your swagger related details into another project and it's more readable as well so i'm going to create a separate configuration for swagger so i'll just go to new and create a new class i'll name this as swagger config now since this is a configuration class i'll mark this as a configuration and the second thing i'm going to enable swagger for this so enable swagger 2 the next thing that we would need is we have to initialize the swagger related configuration using this so I'll create a method for Swagger API 
config. Now this method is going to take care all of my Swagger configuration. So in Swagger, there is a specific class which is called as docket, which take care of all your configuration details. So I'm going to use this class which is already provided as docket and I will pass this as a documentation type as swagger2 which we are going to use in our project. So swagger2 is something that we are going to use. Okay, let me maximize this screen. Okay. Now I have to import this docket class which is coming from springfox.documentation. Okay, now we are done. If you go to this, now there are certain methods that we have to use. Let me just quickly write then I'll explain uh, each steps in detail. The next thing that we would need is path selector. So if you do that, then path and the next thing that we would need is APIs. So we are going to tell Swagger that please use this base package. So what is base package in this case? Base package is uh, the place where I have put all of my component. Here it is com.example.rest API. Okay, so my base package I will give as com.example. And uh, another thing and the last thing that you would need is build. So I'm going to build everything with this. Are giving me error void methods cannot return a value change method type to docket okay yep so now we have written the swagger configuration so let me just talk about this dot select method did this dot select method actually indicate that it is going to return the api select builder and this build method is actually to provide all the api related information while building the swagger ui so this is something which docket already provide and we just have to use it. The next thing is path and we are telling, okay, what are path that you want to map when you are building your Swagger UI. So for the time being, I have just given any. So whatever path that I have, please use this for Swagger UI. The another thing that is APIs means we are telling, okay, for this directly, for this directly, whatever api documentation that i have related to swagger please scan those and use it while building the swagger ui and at the end we are building everything with all these information now with this we are almost ready now let me just start my application which is spring boot so i just restarted okay it says there is some error let me just quickly check Okay, so we have not imported this uh, package for this bean. So it's coming from context. Okay, now it is done. Now I'll go to my Spring Boot application, run as Java application. So now our app is started and it is running on Tomcat 8080. Now, this is what Swagger has built so far for us. As you can see, there are two controllers which is captured. One is cart controller and another is hello world controller. Hello world controller is something that we have just now written. And if I click on that, it will show the method which is exposed inside that. Right now, we just have one, so it's showing that method. And under cart controller, we have four methods which I have already created as told. So with this, we have basically configured the swagger. Okay. Now let me change a little bit more, which will give a bit proper documentation with our config. So we have already provided and scanned the API, but I want to give some more information to this API. So there is something called an API method, which I'm going to use. So Docker has an API info method where I have to pass all those details. Okay, for just to save time, I've already copied those and this is quite straightforward. I'm just going to pass the heading and contact details and all those things. This is more of a self-explanatory stuff that we want to add for our API. 
now i have to import this and collections i have to import as well okay so now we have pretty much provided all the info that is needed let me just restart my server once again says it has error uh, okay there is a parenthesis repeat okay so let me just quickly restart my project yep now if i reload this class so this pretty much has been improved the look and feel has been improved with some more details like the swagger api is coming from all these heading that we have provided in this api info and the versions and everything okay now if i quickly click on this it will show the various method that we have and say i clicked on this get method then it shows the complete details which is already inbuilt by swagger which we had to do manually in our postman when we are doing execution of those apis so if i click on this try it out it will ask me okay execute this so when i am executing this api it gives me this response body so this is the response which i am getting and i did not configure anything everything is inbuilt provided another best thing is you can download your response just by clicking on this now let me just go to this add card details and show you if you expand this so if you click on try it out it will get this option okay now let me quickly add this item so if i add another item three and click on so if you notice like this all json format is predefined for you and you just have to enter the value in swagger and even the content type is already provided based on your api documentation so if you click on execute the response body says one that means one row has been inserted if i go back to my get card details and click on execute then this new item has been fetched again so this makes very easy for your api testing and execution okay and not only that like if you want to see a high level details of your api it's convenient for you to use it now another thing i wanted to highlight is if you click on this localhost 8080 api docs then it will give you the complete details of your api in json format right now this ui is not formatted if you have a json plugin in your browser you can easily check all these details so as you can see this description is coming from api reference example by java tech booster and the title and everything which is coming from the details which we have provided in swagger config class now on top of that there are certain additional things that you can also provide in swagger which is completely optional if you want to give a certain details like for this hello world controller okay if you want to specify what kind of operations that you are doing so there is a annotation called api operation if you use this then you can give the value that you are doing like here it just says hello world so will you say hello swagger okay the next property that you can provide here is as a node which is very important so like if you have a complex api or even it is a, if it is a simple api you can briefly write the description what exactly it does so right now this just say hello this is done okay with that if i just quickly restart my project and reload swagger ui go to hello world controller so you can see all these information which i provided as api information has come as a hello swagger so this is displaying here and this just says hello so 
this is something which you can give more details so anybody who want to take a look of your api which you have developed and what it does it will be very easy as a third person to review your api as well as to connect various api if you have a large number of controller in your project okay similarly if you have a entity that you have mapped like if you are using some classes like uh, in our cart api the pojo classes that we were using was cart item okay and this has uh, various properties id name and price which we were actually persisting into the db so you can also provide the details at the swagger level for each of these field using some annotation called api model property okay and you can again provide something called nodes what it what it does or what is exactly so like it is an item id right and then what its name its name is suppose id and then is it a required field is it a mandatory field to provide if i give yes then it will take as a true so with that you can similarly provide all these details to your other property class as well so let me just quickly restart my project with this again if i go back and reload my swagger page then we go to this uh, it doesn't have those yes if i go to this cart it will actually show the model that we have okay so under this model i have this cart item so this shows all those details that we have provided so it is a item id which is a mandatory field okay similarly if you go to this api documentation it will actually show the details for your item so if you're looking for cart item then it will show the complete details of your cart item and it will show you if it is a mandatory field or not okay so with that we have pretty much uh, uh, like uh, have seen like how we can utilize swagger and what is the benefit that we have so all this thing that swagger does for us is not provided by postman which is a biggest uh, flexibility and the benefit of using swagger and it looks more compact as far as your api is concerned so with that we have completed the demo now in our next video i'm going to talk about how you can configure logger in your rest web services using spring boot so thank you for watching please like and subscribe for more java tutorial videos thank you so much